So he gets a lot of flack for working with peas. There's nothing wrong with a pea. Let's look at the anatomy of a pea plant. It's pretty simple. It's a dicot. How do I know that? Yep, it's got branched venation on the leaves. It's got a taproot. Great. Okay, that's not important here. Just a fact. So what is it about peas that are all that exciting? Well, they self-pollinate, which to most of us isn't going to make a lot of sense, but it essentially means you can cross a pea to itself. So you can use a, the pollen from, from pea plant A to fertilize the ovary of pea plant A, okay, self-fertilization. Today we might think about it like cloning, but this is not the same. You actually want to think about this more as asexual reproduction. Okay, fine, great. We can look at that and we'll think about why that's important, but you also need to think about the simplicity of a pea plant, okay? What is it about this pea that makes it so special compared to another kind of plant you could use? Well, Mendel looked at a number of different types of, of characteristics. He focused on this idea of cross and self-pollination, so really this is equivalent to asexual and sexual reproduction, okay? There were differences, certainly. We'll think about that and looked at a huge variety of characteristics, or we said this was phenotype, okay? Huge variety of characteristics. But he was very, very careful to select things that only had two choices for the characteristics. So I have here for you white and purple flowers. Well, in the peas that he was working with, those were the only flower color options, white or purple. This made his work much easier. We don't always have that simplicity today, but in his work, that was an easy way to track things, and you'll see why it was so important as we, as we go through things. So he did a whole lot of work with scissors and paintbrushes, which doesn't sound very exciting, but that is the extent of the excitement of plant sex with peas when we look at pea plants and Mendel. So he did a whole lot of pollination, he wanted to make sure that he knew which plants had pollinated and fertilized which other plants so that he could keep track of these offspring. So we need to start looking at generation indicators. So P is parents, F1, these are called filial, or F1, or offspring, okay? So this is like your parents and this is you, okay? So these generations, we'll also look at F2 generations, F3 generations. So from the originals, these would be grandkids, great grandkids, okay? Um, so we'll look at that and, and how this genetics and inheritance plays out. These are some of the basic characteristics that Mendel looked at over the course of time. We mentioned the purple and white flowers. Most of you who have heard of Mendel before have probably focused on the green and yellow peas and whether or not they were smooth peas or wrinkled peas. But the ideas just kind of are endless um, for Mendel here. He also looked at things like stem leaves. We now know that stem, that, um, stem length is, is regulated by hormones. Um, he knew that a little bit. He had some understanding of that, but he also knew that in the absence of any additions to these plants, so these are straight natural plants that he's working with, he knew that some just happen to be taller and some happen to be shorter. We would know now that ha that has a lot to do with oxen, the hormone, but he didn't focus on that. He was just interested in that as a variable characteristic. So that's a big thing for us. We have to have variable phenotypes um, to really understand what's going on with genetics. So he did. He has a couple of them here that we'll, that we'll talk about in more detail as, as we go through. He set up things known as crosses, okay? A monohybrid cross is just a cross of one trait or one characteristic, mono meaning one, okay? 
So when he looked at this trait, what he would set up is a parent. So this is our P generation or our parental generation. He crossed one white flower and one purple flower. Well, if you were still following the rules of blending, we would say that you would get a light purple flower, right? But we said blending doesn't exist, so this isn't going to exist. So what did he see? Well, quite frankly, it confused him. Because when he crossed a white flower and a purple flower, he got all purple flowers in the first generation. Where'd the white flowers go? Well, like this wasn't confusing enough, when he then crossed this first generation to produce a second generation, okay, he ended up with purple flowers and white flowers again. So these traits seem to be disappearing and reappearing, and so he's got to get a handle on this. And this is really what led him to start thinking about math. Because when you cross the purple flower and white flower in the P generation to get this F1 or, or kids generation and these all purple plants, and then you cross the kids and you end up with more offspring, fine, in this second generation, the grandkids, and you start getting this combination of flower colors, he saw, he saw over time that he was always getting the same ratios. We have here 3 quarters and 1 quarter, 75% purple and 25% white, okay? We know now that that is a standard um, genetic response to what's going on with inheritance. And we'll look at this more and, and think about why it happens. But this is really what led him to say, all right, biology's great. Pea plants are terrific. I love being a monk. But... I still have to apply some math to this. I've got to figure out what's really going on. Because you've got to think at this point, Mendel's spending a whole lot of time in a greenhouse talking to a bunch of pea plants. He has to prove that what he's doing has merit to it, okay? Because even the monks make fun of one another, right? We have to find, Mendel has to find some way to explain this weirdness that is going on, all right? So he had to explain this disappearance of traits. So in the case I just showed you, the disappearance of the white flower, and then why the white flower returns again in the F2 generation. And we'll see it again in F3. The white flower will be present in F3, okay, and so on and so forth. But it's this disappearance from the first generation and reappearance in the second generation that really throws everything for a loop for Mendel, and he's got to figure out what's going on.